Hello it's Northwest Trains. I'm Tom and I'm back in the loft finally. It's um still a bit warm but um this turned up today and I couldn't resist getting up here uh, straight from work pretty much. So um this uh, model came out I think it was last week sometime and I was on and on for ages should I shouldn't I because I'd already forked out for um the class one four two on their pre order. But then, you know, I couldn't resist. So uh, I opted for the sound fitted version. So this is direct from real track. And it's a class 156. You can see there, unique sounds from DC kits and Lego Man Biffo. And what I did know originally was it's designed and manufactured by Rapido trains. So um, interesting. I actually thought real track done them themselves. So it just shows how little in you. <laughs> um, so, yep, yeah, let's have a little look at it. Okay, I took uh, turned the camera off because uh, I didn't want to waste five minutes getting the lid off. It was pretty tight, but it's a good thing. As you know, I had trouble with the fair beam getting smashed in the post. So, yeah, decent packaging helps. This was wrapped in a cardboard box with no other packaging, but at the end of the day, you know, the box itself looks pretty good. So, fingers crossed it's all alright. A uh, little bit of paperwork, a little bit of a catalogue by the looks of it different decoders different models you can get so this is the one I've gone for you want to just pause it and you can have a quick read of that if you wanted to same again here real tech models high quality double gauge modern DMUs so if you watch my videos you know I've already got the uh, class 144 pacer and uh, that's one of my favorite diesels to run actually so um, that's why I I wanted to get the 142, but also seeing this, I've got 150, 158. I haven't got a 156, so one reason I really wanted it. And a lot of the train spot and spots I go to is Carnforth, so you see these all the time. So I thought I've got to get one. Um, so here's our instruction manual. The address is set to 156, which is handy. It saves me changing it. So got a history of the. Uh, the loco now if I remember um, rightly there's 104 or there was 114 of them I think there's uh, last time I checked there's 109 still in service the rest are stored I don't think any of them are scrapped yet as far as I know but anyone can if you want to correct me and let me know feel, please feel free this is interesting as well because I have no idea what half the gear is underneath these locos. You just think, oh yeah, that's great detail. But yeah, look, for all the info about what everything is under there, I won't remember it like so. <laughs> Pause it and look at it when I show you it in a minute. But yeah, it's quite nice to know actually all these different things. Battery box, fuel tank, air brake equipment, so on. So yeah, nice bit of detail there. I think the only two companies that run 156s now are Scott Rail and Northern. Uh, so, it's a bit interesting. They might not have long left these when you think of all these new DMUs and the, um, these tri mode sort of units that they're bringing out now. So, it'll be interesting to see how much longer they last. So, again, removing the body shell, Operation DC, installing decoders, Operation DCC sound. So, I'll have to have a look at that in a minute. Um, Oh, and here we go, there's um, what I'll be looking at later. Little features, we'll go over them in a sec once we get it on the track, so I'll keep that handy. Um, when I, was, I was a bit like weary when I saw uh, Rapido trains. I know everyone raves about them, so there's a little thing here, but my Hunslet was a complete disaster. And um, so I've got other locos on pre-order. I've got the Lion, and I've got the Pannier Tank. So let's hope they turn out all right. Anyway, this is all I'm worried about at the moment. Let's see if uh, this beauty turns out alright. Now, just looking at it through the box, it looks absolutely stunning. So, um, we'll just quickly get one out to, to see, um, and we'll get it straight on the track again because I know my I tend to drag on a bit talking too much, so it's just it's well wrapped up, isn't it? Look at all that. I've got to say though, and the weight in this as well, you can feel the weight in it. 
it just looks like quality and uh, when you read about them because the motor's so slim it's like hidden under the seat and there's no blanked out windows in any of this you see all the little tables and chairs there looks really really nice you can just see the effort that's been put into this model again one thing I'm a bit wary of especially with the Rapido Hunslet is the company seems to put so much effort into the detail of these trains now that sometimes you forget the basic things like running quality and coupling up and things like that so I'm hoping nothing will involve this one because like I say the 144 I've got I couldn't fault it it's um, still running great you know over nearly two years later and it's one of the most run locos on my layout I presume that's the speaker there so again you can see where all the pickups are here on every wheel like I say you can, I could look I'm gonna look back in the booklet and find out what all these bits of detail are now because that's quite interesting and all the different detail here it's all separately fitted parts you can pick them all out see how look how fragile looking that is you know so um again it just look quality to me when you when you look at them on the internet and see other people's opinions as the last batch of them it's like the little wipers here on the front all separately fitted parts and I've had the money I'd have bought two of them so I could uh, join them together but <laughs> out of the question at the moment right um got to get this on the track now and we'll have a few uh, go at the sounds and see what they're like so uh, back in a sec Okay, I've got the uh, 156 out, but this is just a little detail bag. You've got two of the standard couplers, you've got two dummy couplers, and you've got the coupler bar to go between the two units. I forgot to mention as well, there's a motor in each of these units, not just a one, so that's going to be interesting to see how it runs. Now, to get this to connect, it's just a case of pushing that into there like that but I'm obviously I want to put it on a, a soft surface to do it properly because you've got to push it together and then get hold of the other end and hope, hopefully click it together without uh, breaking anything so you do get a spare bar if you do break it but hopefully it won't I've also already managed to knock one of the little wire bars a little tiny bit of detail here I managed to stick it back into place but it just shows you know Plenty of detail also means uh, potential risk of damage. Anyway, I'm going to connect it up now properly and uh, get it on the track. Okay, we're back on the track. And I uh, almost thought I had a problem then because um, in the booklet it says it's the address is 156. So I put it in and no movement from the loco whatsoever. And then I thought, well, I'll just try number three, which is uh, what normal normally what locos are set at. No movement whatsoever. And I thought, oh no, I've got to dig out my uh, test track and you know see if I can renumber it. And um, I just thought, I wonder if they've just put the wrong address in. So I went through, I tried one, uh, one five, that didn't work. And then I tried five six, and uh, that worked. So yeah, just a bit of a renumbering mistake, I think, from the factory. Well, or from uh, real track itself. So um, anyway, so number one, uh, we got engine start. So both cars start separately. We're having a motor in each. Okay, let's try the horn, number two. Uh, low horn, number three. Passenger doors open and close, um, number Brake application number five. 
Driver's door open six. Compressor. Run stationary. And we even have a toilet pipe flush discharge. Let's, let's see what that's like. Yeah, not the nicest sound in the world, is it? I'm not sure you'd hear it that loud in the uh, station anyway. <laughs> right, um, so we've got uh, verbal speed flying squeal, number 9, we'll see that when the loco is running. Dispatch whistle, 10. Then we've got uh, various lighting, so let's try 12. Passenger compartment lighting. We've also got um, directional destination indicator, 13. Oh, come on. Uh, automatic coupling sounds, 14. Uh, let's try PA announcements. We've got three of them, so we'll just do the one for now. Welcome aboard this service to Carlisle. Please familiarise yourselves with the safety notices adjacent to the doors. Okay, let's just try another one. Welcome aboard this service to Leeds. Please familiarise yourselves with the safety notices adjacent ah, to the doors. So I've got the destination for Leeds to Morecambe. Like I say, I go to Carnforth a lot, so this train would have passed through there quite a bit. So I'm guessing F17 is the announcement to Morecambe, so let's see. Or maybe not. <laughs> it's on the, along the route. Right, so um, we've got cab lights, 19. There we go. And then we've got nighttime running mode. So we've got zero, which is the general lights. So we'll try the nighttime running mode when um, I turn the lights off. And then we've got parking lights. Reds both ends, that's a bit different. So, um, what we'll do now is um, I'll just I'll turn the lights out and see what it's like on the uh, night mode. So, uh, back in a sec. Okay, I've turned the lights out, I've got the night mode on. So, um, let's just change the direction now. That's pretty bright, isn't it? It's it's just nice that it's you know it's not going to blind the people sitting in the in the uh, carriages. So I think what we'll have to do is get some passengers to go in it. So let's just bring it back into the station. I say I'm just going to do this now, and then it's going to go in for a proper run round the layout. Give it a good half an hour in each direction. And um, considering it's two separate motors, it seems to work perfectly uh, in sync with each other. So um, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm gonna take it back out the station now. I'm gonna turn the lights back on. I'm gonna send it off for a good run around the layout. So uh, hope you enjoy the running session, and uh, I'll let you know what I think at the end. Right, it seems to be running nicely now. It's almost finished its running in. Now um, I'm going to try it again, but it uh, derailed on these points, unfortunately. It did say in the instructions that not suitable for uh, first radius, and it also said not suitable for set track points and class them as first radius. So that's a bit of a shame. So. 
this local will have to stick to my uh, outer fiddle yard for now if it's not suitable for these points it's funny because uh, the Backman 158 manages it fine and that's quite a long DMU but um, yeah, I'm not too worried because eventually I'm hoping to get rid of the setback points altogether but for the time being I'm uh, stuck with them but yeah so I'm going to get the sand back on now and uh, we'll do a um, proper little running session so we're uh, back in a sec Welcome aboard this service to Selby. Please familiarise yourselves with the safety notices adjacent to the doors.
Right, that concludes the running in for uh, the Class 156. Um, overall, very happy with it. Detail-wise, absolutely amazing, faultless. And um, the detail delivery applica application, stunning, delighting, one of my favourite things. All the different features is really good. Even the little lights on here working. Now, um, so I'm really looking forward to the Class 142. I've got a Hornby one that's been heavily upgraded, but not um in the best running condition at the moment but i'll i'll dig that out uh, when the 142 arrives and we'll compare them so um only slight sort of issues is like a few different locomotives they don't like these points they seem to bounce off the track here so i'm not too sure why if anyone can tell me please let me know and my curve point coming into the station there's a few slight derailments there but I've got a feeling it might be the DC clips, the uh, transferring power to the track that might have got in the way. But uh, I'm not too worried. I'd, I'd say it's more my track work than the loco. I haven't tested it on set track points because it advises not to. So um, I'm not going to bother. But overall, yeah, I'm very, very happy with it. It's a lovely loco. Again, you know, you get what you pay for. It's not a cheap model. It's not a toy model. So, um, you know, I can recommend them if you want one. Certainly for a smaller, maybe up and down layout of a, of a uh, single station, it wouldn't have had to the, you know, running in effect, you know, all the different features on the logo, if it's going up and down. So, um, anyway, yeah, I certainly give it at least a 9 out of 10 anyway so far. The only other issue is it did get a little bit noisy. You might have heard it in the running session. Um, it is quite noticeable. But hopefully, I've seen a few other people mention it in the past, and I think it does get better over time. But other than that, you know, I'm not too worried about it because I've got the sounds on, which is louder than the sound of the, the engine motor. And anyway, let me know what you think, and um, would you be getting one? And uh, I'll leave you with a running shot of um, the real thing. So, um, big thank you for watching, and uh, keep an eye out for the next video. Bye for now.